All right, so let's go to File and Open. And we're going to open the butterfly.png, and we're also going to open the flower field. So you can command click on both of those and click Open. Okay, so we got them both open here. I'm just going to zoom out of that. We got our butterfly. The butterfly is a PNG. You're welcome. You don't have to cut it out. So what I want you to do is go to the butterfly image and click and drag, 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 drag up into your flower field. Drag, 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 and release. So we got our butterfly and we got our flower field. Looks really fake, right? So let's make it work. First thing I'm going to do is make it into a smart object. So right click and convert to smart object. Okay, so now any changes that we make won't degrade the original image. So now I'm going to Command T and I'm going to click and drag. Maybe I'll make him super big, which is completely unrealistic. Maybe he's flying into my camera when I'm taking the picture. What do you think? Looks bad? Kind of looks bad. I'm going to press Enter. Could work, but probably not. <laughs> Back to my command T. I'm going to bring him down. Maybe he'll be floating around somewhere here. I'm just trying to think of where where the butterfly might be. What if he's right in front of this flower? What do we think of that? Realistic? No? No? Um, usually when I do this, I make him pretty small, and I kind of put him over. I put him over here. But I kind of wanted to try something different today. So maybe I will... Just turning him around. I do like this sort of in-flight position. I don't want to add him to the sky. Actually, that might work. Maybe I will add him to the sky. I haven't done that before. Mm, no, I'm going to keep him here. Okay, just keeping him a little bit bigger than normal. That could be realistic. Could be. Okay, enter. I want to show you one more thing I could do with my command T again. Um, he's kind of in almost like, now I'm thinking of perspective here, right? So he's kind of almost facing forward, whereas maybe if he was flying towards me, he wouldn't necessarily be facing forward. Maybe he would be more in almost a different perspective. So a way to change the perspective is when you press and hold command and you hover over the individual points, you can move them separately and you can change the perspective. I mean, that's of course an extreme. So maybe what I might do is actually do something a little bit more like this. I feel that maybe his inner wing might look better a little bit more, maybe like that. It's kind of extreme now, I've got to bring that down. Okay, so I think I like that better. Um, and then press enter whenever you're happy with it. Uh, that's okay, I don't know, maybe I'm not happy. I'm gonna command Z that. Command Z one more time, one more time. Command Shift Z will put you back to where you were. Okay, okay, now I'm done fiddling and messing around with the butterfly. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add that black and white layer. So I'm gonna go to my adjustment layers. I'm gonna go to black and white, make sure I'm on my butterfly layer, and I'm just gonna move them around. And you can kind of see that, I mean, it doesn't look too bad. I do have them up here a little bit, and this area seems to be a little bit lighter than him. If you squint your eyes, um, you can kind of see how he might fit in, how he might not fit in. Again, not so bad um, for the luminosity values. I think he could be probably a little bit brighter based on his background. So I'm going to add another adjustment layer. So back down at the bottom of my layers palette, I'm going to go for my levels and I need to clip my levels to my butterfly. So I'm going to press and hold my alt, hover between these two layers, no clicking, no dragging, just hovering. And then once I see the square and the arrow, I'm going to click and that will attach or clip this levels to my butterfly. So again, any changes that I make to my butterfly or to this, to my levels will only affect my butterfly. Okay, so here you can see I can change it. I can make them really dark or lighter or whatever. So like I was saying, I did sort of want to brighten them up just to make them match the background a little bit. And again, only slightly because it is a pretty good match. So something like that. So there's the before and there's the after. So I just slightly brightened them up. I'm going to turn off my black and white layer and there's the before and there's the after. So he's slightly brighter. So the next thing I want to take a look at is the saturation levels. So he seems pretty saturated, again, compared to the background. The other thing is the background image 
is a cool tone and he is orange he's like fluorescent orange compared to the background we have to do a bit of color correcting here too so something to take into consideration okay so we've done our luminosity values so that's check one next thing we're going to do is the hue and saturation levels so there is actually a way to check um, kind of like with the black and whites um, there is a way to check saturation of the images together so we're going to create a hue and saturation map okay so we're going to create a new layer and it's going to be selective color and so i'm going to click that and with selective color you see that all of the colors are separated onto different channels okay so i'm going to take my reds and what we're going to do with all of these and this is a little bit tedious but it's okay it's going to look good in the end i'm going to take everything down cyan magenta yellow black everything down to zero in each of these colors except whites neutrals and blacks they're going to be plus 100 okay so reds all negative 100 yellows all negative 100 and it should be affecting the whole image so don't worry about that greens all negative 100 okay so we're taking the saturation and the colors again out of the image Okay, just so we can see the saturation differences between the two images. So magentas would be the last one, which will be negative 100. Okay, and then we're going to go to our whites, which is going to be plus 100 for everything. And then our neutrals, plus 100. And then our blacks, plus 100. We want to make sure that we click on absolute. So this is what it should look like. So what it's showing you are the areas that are the most saturated. So you can see this butterfly, really saturated. So this turns the image into black and white and it tells us where the saturated areas are. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is now we're gonna create our hue and saturation layer and we're going to attach it to our butterfly so we can match the butterfly's saturation to the background. Okay, so I'm gonna select my butterfly layer and I'm gonna to go to my adjustment layers and I'm gonna choose my hue and saturation. Now my hue and saturation is already clipped to my butterfly. So now I can play with the saturation. So look at the butterfly when I bring it up and bring it down. The butterfly changes with color here also. Okay, so originally this is the butterfly, it's too bright, so I know that I have to bring the saturation down. But like with the caterpillar, I just guessed it. I just sort of eyeballed it. If I had to use this, I could have matched the caterpillar to the background a little bit better. So basically what we wanna do is match it to the closest gray. So I'm looking at sort of a mid gray, which might be something along here because the butterfly is sort of on the same plane, so I want something on the same plane. I'm ignoring all the flowers. That's where all the color is. I'm just looking at the greens in here and I want the butterfly to almost stand out a bit, not maybe as bright as the flowers, as saturated as the flowers, because again, he is like fluorescent orange compared to the background. So um, he will stand out more no matter what. So I brought my saturation down to minus 25, which is a pretty big difference. I don't think I would have done that if I had been eyeballing it. I do want to double check this because I feel like it's too much still. It makes me nervous. I'm going to turn off my selective color. And actually it looks really good. <laughs> so when I hide my saturation, my hue and saturation level, you can see here the difference. So there's before and you can see he's really bright orange and there he is again. And he actually fits way better into this for the saturation levels. Here's what we had originally and here's what we've done. So we've taken away some of the saturation we had to lighten him slightly also right lighten yes we lightened him slightly okay so the next thing we're gonna do is we need to match the butterfly to the hue of the overall image the overall image has a cooler tone to it we've got the sunset in the back but the blues and greens are really coming out from those pine trees or spruce trees behind our butterfly and the field of course has a lot of green you can always select the background layer and if i were to double click on my color chip and just click in here and click and drag you can see we've got a lot of greens over here it's pretty teal and and blue so again really cool 
even though we've got the sunset that's really warm over there but over here it's all cool this butterfly is in the cool zone but this butterfly is pretty pretty red so let's match our butterfly to the background rather than fiddling with colors and choosing the color balance tool we're gonna actually take the background and we're gonna apply it to the butterfly so it's gonna be the exact colors that we want okay so we're gonna take our background layer and we're gonna duplicate it command J will duplicate your background copy with our background copy we're going to blur it so let's go to filter and blur and Gaussian blur and I'm not worried about creating a smart object because I'm just looking for colors here I want it to be blurred like this I want lots of blur I want basically no detail all I'm looking for again is the color because I need to apply this color to my butterfly okay so I'm good with this this kind of blur this is great you can see the blues and the greens and kind of some yellows here so I'm gonna click OK and I'm gonna move this layer above my butterfly and I'm clipping it to the butterfly check out the butterfly now the butterfly has the layer of the background applied to it so it's the exact same color as the background now so all we need to do is change our blend mode to color okay now we've got a green butterfly pretty cool yeah and it completely matches the background of course this is a monarch we need him to be orange so we're gonna bring down our opacity but now he has the reflection of the environment or the lighting of the environment and the coolness of the environment reflecting in the orange so maybe somewhere around 20 could work so there's the before and there's the after again lots of subtle changes but that's what makes separate images work together what are the things we're looking for lighting how's our lighting our lighting is okay our luminosity values we did that the hue and saturation and we brought down the saturation we created our saturation map our noise how's the noise in this it's not very sharp we're okay for the noise no worries sharpness I think the butterfly could benefit from a little bit of a blur because when I look at the foreground I see that these flowers right in the front these ones are in focus this starts to blur as it goes further back so uh, my butterfly is a smart object so I'm gonna go to my filter and blur and Gaussian blur and that's way too much of course so I'm just gonna blur him slightly so he kind of matches with the plane here so again here this is your focal point kind of in here and then it gets a little bit blurry here so maybe I'll do 1.1 1.2 just a slight blur here's the before here's the after yeah maybe I'll do oops it came down a bit maybe I'll do like a 1.3 so before and you can see the edges of his wings and then after and he's blurred I'm gonna go back down to like a 1.1 maybe 1.2 I'm nitpicking perfect click OK and again there you have your smart object you have your Gaussian blur if you decide you don't like it you can always go back and change it so let's take a look at our before and after so this is our after okay so if I hide all the work we did this is our before pretty saturated and bright so I'm gonna turn everything on slightly blur them and now he works better with the environment and it looks much more realistic